Hey guys, how's it going? As you may or may not know, the pins of the microcontroller can serve different functions apart from simple input and output. The information on what alternate functions specific pins can perform is usually specified in the microcontroller's pinout or the datasheet. Taking a look at the pinout of the microcontroller I am using, I can see that almost all pins can perform some kind of alternate function. For instance, pins PA7, 6 and 5 and pin PB0 can actually perform various alternate functions with one of them being SPI. So let's take a look at how to set these pins up for the SPI protocol as an example. To configure these pins to serve the SPI function only three registers are required. The mode register, alternate function low and alternate function high. In the GPIO port mode register, pins 7, 6, 5 and 0 need to be set to alternate function mode to allow them to operate as SPI pins. I covered the mode register in more detail in my previous video, so check it out to find out more. The two GPIO alternate function registers set the alternate function mode that the pins will operate in as the name implies. The low register configures pins 0 to 7 of a given port while the high register configures pins 8 to 15. There are 4 bits for every pin which means that each one could potentially have up to 16 alternative functions. The reference manual for the microcontroller I am using does not describe what function each bit configuration represents. For that I need to take a look at the microcontroller's datasheet. Here we navigate to the alternate function tables which provide more detail on the relationship between the configuration of the bits and the function each one represents. From here we can see that label AF5 represents SPI1 and 2. As previously seen from the microcontroller's pinout, pins PA7, 6, 5 and pin PB0 can serve as SPI pins for SPI1, which these tables also reflect. So alternate function 5 is selected by writing a value of 5 into the appropriate position of the register which corresponds to the pin that is to be configured. To set the pins we need for SPI1, the following bits need to be configured. Since all SPI1 pins can be configured using GPIO alternate function low register, I will not need the upper register for this example. In the project, I have almost completed the setup for SPI1. All that needed to be done now is configure the pins to the alternate function. I first reset the mode of the pins I am going to use to a known state and then set the mode of the pins to alternate function by accessing the respective ports of the pins and then setting the appropriate bits in the port mode register. I then repeat the process by resetting the alternate function of the pins to a known state and then setting all the required bits in the GPIO alternate function low register to configure the pins to operate in SPI1 mode. And there you go, this is all there is to setting pins to operate in alternate function mode. Now to test if the pins have been correctly configured, I have connected an MPU9250 to the microcontroller in an attempt to extract data from it using SPI. After downloading the code onto the board, I hooked up my oscilloscope to see if there is any activity on the pins. Zooming in, you can see that I get a beautiful SPI diagram on my screen, which confirms that the pins have indeed been configured correctly. Anyway, this is it for this one. If you found this video helpful, give it a like and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.